Randall Lottery star David Aikman and Estelle Aikman, his wife, was murdered, murdered on November 11, 1973. My name's John Brown and I'm guilty of those murders. So I signed up for the Marine Corps. And um, I was 17 at that point. But you know, that's the only place that I felt like I was at home. In the Marine Corps? In the Marine Corps. I mean, I made good Marine because I made it quick. Even without an education, you know, I was a... I made corporal in less than a year after being in. And I, I volunteered to go to Vietnam. And my wife, I'd gotten married at that time when I come in on, I come in out of boot camp, I got married. And, but my wife was out in California with me, my first wife, and she was pregnant. She didn't know that she was pregnant at the time I volunteered to go to Nam. But I got my orders to go to Nam and I drove back from San Diego or Camp Pendleton, all the way here to Nashville. And I was stopped out here on, in, on Ben Allen Road and just stopped in the red light and the guy hit me in the rear end. And uh, I had a 59 Oldsmobile and it was like a tank, but he put the tail lights up in the front seat with me as I already hit me. Uh, put me in a body cast. Well, needless to say, that was kind of the end of me going to Nam. And uh, oh. they carried me before a medical review board. And uh, keep in mind, I'd, I'd done found me a home. I'd make a career out of this. It's, this I, I like that. I like the Marine Corps. I enjoyed it. And after I got back to Calvin Hilton, uh, they carried me through a bunch of doctors and all, because I was in a body cast. And, uh, they gave me a discharge, a medical discharge. Said that I, you know, I had some discs wrong in my back, something like. And uh, anyway, then kind of got forced out on a medical discharge. And when they done that, I, that was the end of it. I give up on life. I give up on everything. Um, I thought to myself, man, the Marine Corps. I mean, something like the Marine Corps don't even want you. And I started drinking, and I pretty well, that was in uh, September of 69. And at that point, my wife and I were beginning to have some problems. You know, because I, I was drinking all the time. I mean, that that she had done, it was all my fault. But uh, I pretty well stayed drunk all that time, up until 73. So when my divorce became final, I just, I lost everything. And there was two children at that point? We had two sons at that point. Did she take them back to California? No, she was from originally from Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh. Uh, yeah, she took them back to uh, Pennsylvania and they were raised there. But even being in Pennsylvania, they, they didn't, they wasn't immune to my charge. Once I got my final decree in October, I never set a bottle down. Really? Until I come to, well, actually until I come to prison or get locked up. I figured at that point I'd done lost everything worth having in life. My second wife, the, my current wife. Your current wife. Right. And I were grade school sweethearts. We know one another all our lives. Mm -hmm. And when we met back up in seventy three, uh, it was just it just seemed natural. You know, that we could we get back together. And I'd like to just start over. You know, and I know you can't really start over. But I'd like to what little life I've got left and I I'm, 53 years old now, and I don't, I don't have too many years left, and my health's not in the best shape, but that's, 
I guess anybody's my age is not in good shape either. So, but I'd like to spend some time with my wife. My wife been with me for 30 years, and over 30 years now. And we just like to spend some quality time together. I've got grandbabies I'd like to see. I'd like to see my sons. Spend some time with them, get to know them. They've never known me. When I got locked up, my sons were three and two. And they live in another state. And thank God they did because of all the publicity and all this other stuff. But they know I'm their biological father, but they don't know me as a father. So I'd like to spend some time with them. I'd like to get to, to know them and them get to know me. I've got two granddaughters I've never seen. So it's important for me to build these family ties. I know I can't make up for the past, and, and but I'd like to just get to know them, you know, love them, let them love me. 30 years ago, I come to prison. I was probably one of the most angriest people you'll ever meet in your life. I didn't like myself. And if I didn't have any respect or, or like myself, then I certainly didn't have none for anybody else. The Department of Corrections put me in solitary confinement for almost three years. Now, um, why they done it, I don't know. And it doesn't make any difference why they done it. But the point is that probably helped me more than anything else did. Because I had an opportunity that few people have. I had an opportunity to look at my life. I had an opportunity to evaluate my life and try to figure out where I went wrong, why I was angry at me and the world around me. And I just, I never felt like I fit in.